we are back and dr parikala is with us so thank you for joining us doctor uh, my first question to you today uh, well you are one of two people who had predicted the mandate we've seen after the results uh, were declared and contrary to the exit polls you said that this time it's people versus modi bjp nda how do you view this well uh... you know that is the sense that uh, i got way back in january dev uh, you know for the last 10 months i have been uh, going around the country uh, attending my uh, book discussion events or book launch events because my book uh, uh, after it came out uh, in uh, english it's uh, also been translated to into many languages so i've been going around except for uh, jammu and kashmir and some uh, northeastern states i have touched almost uh, every state in the country and uh, to some states i have been to more than once two times or three times also so wherever i went after the event or before the event i used to spend some time going to the campuses interacting with the youngsters that's one the second thing that i used to do spend some time in meeting a cross section of people men women different age groups different income groups different educational qualifications different professions rural urban you know demographic geographic you know all sorts of uh, people because you know i have some training in uh, conducting surveys in market research and opinion polling etc uh so i used those skills um and then i got a sense sometime in january last year i mean uh, this year sorry uh, 24 uh, january uh that uh, that the ground in india the political ground in india is shifting massively that was the sense i've got but then uh, in january Uh, some somewhere towards the end of january i think it was 22nd if i'm not wrong um, ram temple was uh, inaugurated pran pratishtha was done so i was uh, I, i took a pause and i was a, a bit skeptical uh, what could be the impact of uh, ram mandir uh, pran pratishtha so i waited for a while and then since then i started uh, looking for somebody uh some sample where the person was not a bjp supporter modi supporter before 22nd january and because of 22nd january pran pratishtha of uh, ayodhya ram mandir he or she turned into a modi supporter a bjp supporter so i was looking for some evidence very hard evidence to that effect um i looked around i used to ask people um, uh, whenever i went uh, around and met people in different parts of the country um you know you will be surprised to know i have not met a single person who was not with bjp modi before 22nd january but then turned into a supporter therefore i uh, concluded that the pran pratishtha of uh, ram janmabhoomi did not get them additional votes well hmm. it might have consolidated their existing support base but it has not accrued it has not really uh, added any vote to them so that was my conclusion therefore all my earlier findings uh, were intact in my mind and then i was also looking at the economic parameters the rural distress the farm agitation price rise unemployment uh, inequality um, you know youngsters and rural families and uh, uh, women and men uh, you know lower middle classes uh, the way they were struggling and then when i went you know during my trips when i started asking people about what are the main issues that they had in mind if they were to go and vote so they were talking about unemployment price rise uh, 
you know, uh, agriculture crisis, rural crisis, rural distress. These are the things that were coming about. So I put these two together. And then I also uh, came I mean, to the conclusion that Ram Janmabhumi's uh, uh, impact is, is more or less nowhere, I mean, it's neutral. So mm. I came to yeah. the conclusion that, uh, you know, it, it's going to be a very tough time for the BJP. Now, very funnily, uh, you know, in eight seats, BJP has won with a margin of less than 10,000 votes. And in 40 seats, their winning margin is between 10,000 to 50,000. So how do you uh, see this in respect to people's perspective about the so-called uh, Modi magic uh, that has been much touted about in the mainstream media? One thing that is very clear uh, from the verdict of this election day is that there's no Modi magic. On the contrary, mm -hmm. there is Modi fatigue. People are, uh, you know, I've, I've met many people who said, uh, he goes on talking, he promises something or the other. He's been promising for a long time. But, you know, always he he moves the goalposts. Uh, so that that is not there. You know, that is very evident in Uttar Pradesh. That's very evident, especially in Varanasi. It's very evident in Ayodhya itself, for Faizabad. Um, and in many places, it's very evident. And uh, the data that you just showed me... Uh, about uh, you know how many seats are won uh, with less than uh, you know uh, ten thousand margins. So the, 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 we need to crunch the numbers even further to see uh, you know some states were surprisingly uh, they gave less number of seats than what many people have uh, uh, thought. Some people have given more than you know what uh, people have uh, forecast. So we, we need to understand what are the local dynamics, what is the national narrative, and you know all these things. Um, another uh, reason why I came to this uh, finding that it is going to be an, a, a fight between Narendra Modi and the people of India, and the fight between BJP and the people of India, fight between NDA and the people of India, was that you know people expressed a lot, lot of uh, misgivings, lot of anger, lot of anguish about the Prime Minister, about the ruling party, about the government, about the uh, alliance. Uh, they were not very clearly favoring another leader. They were not favoring another party. But then that is the reason why I said, uh, when people are used to ask me, you know, what is the board? What about this Tina factor? There is no uh, alternative factor, I mean, that kind of a thing. So if not Modi, who, if not BJP, which party, if not NDA, which alliance kind of a thing. I always used to maintain mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it, it's not a, a fight between two leaders. It is a fight state between uh, the people of India and the leader, the existing leader, the incumbent. Uh, that is the reason why I came to that formulation, because, you know, people are not saying that, you know, this party should defeat that party. Therefore, in most of the places, Dave, if you notice, the electorate cast their vote in a very strategic manner. Hmm. They cast their vote to any party or a leader who they thought would be able to defeat the BJP and Ms. Narendra Modi's candidate. So that is the reason why I came to this uh, formulation. And uh, to a large extent, it, 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 it held uh, right. Yeah, and we see so many examples of it. Uh, I think the biggest example of it was uh, Faizabad, Ayodhya, uh, which went to the Samajwadi Party and not the Bharatiya Janata Party. When we speak of Banswara in Rajasthan, where that infamous uh, first hate speech of uh, Narendra Modi in this election season, although he's made a lot of the hate speeches before, but that was the first one. So there also the BJP candidate was defeated. The Bharti Adivasi Party candidate, which was supported by the Congress, won. Uh, Amethi, Lakhimpur Kheri, where the, uh, the previous MP's son had, you know, uh, run over the farmers and killed them. So there, there were many such examples uh, that came forward in this uh, result that people's mandate somehow has been against 
uh, hatred and divisiveness do you think could you concur with that view yes dev you know uh, the biggest takeaway of this election the verdict is to me that uh, the people have you know stopped the republic of india being dragged towards majoritarian uh, rule majoritarian uh, principle hindutva hindu rashtra kind of a thing uh, the people have voted in order to halt that kind of a trajectory in its tracks and gave out a very loud message stop it <laughs> that's for the yes. comeback and if you think that you know we will tolerate this kind of a hindu musliman mangal sutra machli mujra kind of a narrative you mistake and another takeaway which is related to this is that the people have also said look look at uh, issues like uh, unemployment price rise rural distress kisan these are the things that you need to concentrate on these are the issues that you need to address not the kind of things that you know you went around uh, talking about in your uh, uh, election campaign so that is a, a clear slap in the face of the prime minister it's a, very, it's a very, very loud message dev and uh, they've said stop this so therefore you know in 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 markets people talk about uh, you know correction has happened in the market similarly the indian polity also a, a, a major correction has happened i think uh, the the prime minister and his party and his colleagues would recognize this message and uh, come back to their senses leave these kind of uh, you know majoritarian hindu muslim divisive hateful agenda and come back to you know normal agenda of addressing the uh, problems of the people their uh, distress their unemployment the price rise this should be the agenda so therefore i feel that you know this verdict is very very significant in bringing some kind of a balance back into the indian republic you know you could be slightly right of center or you could be slightly left of center but somewhere near mm -hmm. the center you can't be too much into the right of center where you say you know only hindus matter nobody else matter you know <laughs> Rao, on, only uh, temples matter do not in you know, not other things you know, these things will have to be shed yes and i would certainly like to add that uh, the north eastern states also have a very uh, have given a very resounding uh, mandate in that favor that manipur both the seats have come to congress uh, nagaland the one seat has come to congress so uh, we we clearly see that that the people are reminding this government and i hope they hear this loud and clear uh, although they are very busy them and their followers are still very busy trying to Uh, obfuscate the fact that uh, the republic of india the people have shown them their place with this mandate uh, and actually put a, a a halt to their agenda of changing the constitution uh, making india into a hindu rashtra which many of their leaders have said in the past so let's come to the next question uh, less than a year ago the india alliance was termed as a ragtag group of parties coming together in an attempt to retain relevance uh, what is your view on the alliance and uh, were they strategic uh, in achieving the result that they have you know i have been maintaining for a long time i think we've had this kind of a discussion earlier also that is you know as i said is the fight is mounted by the people and whatever performance the india alliance could uh, exhibit now is because it is it is a beneficiary of the fight of the people against the regime against mr modi against mr uh, you know against the party ruling party and the alliance um mm -hmm. 
this is there are there are many problems uh, with the india lights uh, that's mainly because you know the the government completely controlled the national narrative because you know it captured the media both electronic as well mm. as print and uh, mm. you know the the ruling party is flush with funds on the other hand the main opposition the congress and uh, its friendly parties have very difficulty very much uh, uh, you know they have difficulty in mobilizing funds and their accounts are uh, frozen and two chief ministers were uh, put behind bars uh, you know all these things have happened and uh, the election commission also it's 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 uh, very difficult to say that it was uh, uh, fair and impartial uh their conduct it does not really give you that kind of a confidence there was a lot of trust deficit as far as the election commission is concerned in spite of all that if this is the kind of a performance that the alliance uh, which is an opposition alliance india alliance has put up that's mainly because of the uh, people's uh, uh, choice to people's decision to fight the regime had these handicaps not been there i think the the result would have been drastically different uh, drastically uh, much more in favor of the opposition alliance that's what, that's my feeling and i think one aspect uh, i would like to address before we go to the next question uh, prabhakar is that a lot of these agents now they are being termed as agents of the bjp like uh, the bsp party uh, bhajan samajwadi party uh, they have played a role in uh, at least 16 to 20 seats where they have won the uh, amount of uh, votes which has been the difference between the winning and losing so uh, we do see uh, these sort of forces being also deployed by the bharatiya janata party um, which has also added numbers to their tally uh, in the end of it so uh, what, what do you say about this um they uh, i'm not surprised by this and uh, i think any shrewd politician or any experienced politician or a political party would only expect this because you see our uh, our our democratic electoral democratic system is first past the post system it is not necessary for a political party or a candidate to win majority of the polled votes it's enough to win one vote more than the nearest rival that's it so people do this kind of a thing there are they they play all sorts of tricks in fact uh, uh, they also have uh, in the past i've i've, I've known that uh, parties and individuals uh, field candidates uh, with similar names and you know also go for uh, very similar looking kind of uh, symbols so this confusion so mm. some vote. all this I mean, these these things do happen in our uh, in our electoral, electoral system it's possible uh but in spite of all that you talked about in spite of all that you know this is the kind of result which is a a, a major and significant uh message to the incumbent government or to uh, the entire uh, uh political society entire uh, political establishment but one does wonder whether they are listening to this message loud and clear or they are still busy with uh kind of ignoring what the people are trying to say through their vote so we come to the next question I, and which is yeah you know i always uh, say this uh, dev that you know uh, i mean it's very natural for people and political parties to learn lessons from defeat it happens but yes. much more important is to learn lessons from victory you know if yes. bjp thinks that you know there are no lessons in this uh, whatever victory that uh, <laughs> they have today they'll be very very sadly mistaken and it's yes. it's going to be disaster for the party as well as for the country they have they need to learn lessons what is the message that is embedded in the verdict 2024 mm-hmm. and it will surely become uh, quite uh, a learning manual for political party is going forward uh, what happened in this election um let's come to the next question and this will be the last one 
what are the challenges you see for uh, modi and bjp in running the nda alliance given their fascist and dictatorial tendencies will federalism see a revival in politics going forward you know uh, so far so far as the challenges are concerned they uh, i think every day every hour uh, is a challenge because you see uh, last uh, 10 years Uh, Mr. Narendra Modi ran uh, Union government uh, as though you know it, it is it is not even a party government. We were alone uh, an alliance government. He, it's his own government, <laughs> and he did that in Gujarat also. He's used to that kind of a thing. He is not used to going to somebody asking for uh, counsel or asking for advice, asking for suggestions, or run a proposal by uh, some elderly people, knowledgeable people. <laughs> so taking uh, you know instructions from anybody he he is not used to that even this is from gandhinagar onwards today that is unlikely to happen because they don't command uh, you know uh, majority they have to depend upon uh, uh, their allies especially two allies we who are uh, very very consummate uh, politicians uh, you know they have uh, they have seen long years in politics they have seen both defeat as well as victory whereas mr narendra modi had only seen victories not defeats you know people learn a lot from defeats you know they fell down they get up got up they again fell down they again got up you know that that's not a normal thing they are all battle the both of them mr naidu and mr nitish kumar are battle scarred generals and they are also good tacticians very consummate tacticians they know when to move forward they know when to retreat they know when to st- uh, stay uh, uh, at the same place or halt and you know they uh, they 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 know when to you know uh, uh, put their uh, keep their head down and work without uh, raising the head and talking anything i mean they 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 they, they, they know this this game for a long time therefore in order to you know manage a coalition government uh for modi it's not easy with these two people there because uh, they will have a lot of uh, asks they have a list of demands for the respective states in addition to the political demands and what you must understand is that you know the nda present nda does not have a single party which is an ideological ally of the bjp their views Absolutely. are very different you know on caa on caste census on muslim reservation on uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, um, center state relations on devolution of funds on uh, caa or nrc on um, uh, mathura temple on gyanwapi temple a host of issues which are you know they're, they're, these parties and uh, bjp in the, within the alliance uh, are like chalk and cheese they can't they can't uh, yes. you know uh, they, they they can't see in the same way uh there is no shared vision except you know for formalities sake and you know for pleasantry sake people might uh, say you know uh, uh, modi ji is a man with a vision and we are all supporting we are all with him and all that kind of a thing you know this is <laughs> but what is the shared vision of the nda parties especially the two leaders who are the mainstay in the nda do they agree with uh, uh, all of them let me take mr miss let's take just three important personalities in this uh, government which again i doubt whether it is going to be you know able to pass the uh, 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 you know flow test flow test that's a, yeah that's a different mm-hmm. thing but then mr narendra modi mr chandra babu naidu and mr nitish kumar what is their shared vision mm-hmm. about caste census about muslim reservation about hindu muslim question about nrc about ca about uh, gyanwapi about mathura about you know, a host of issues what is their shared vision do they do they share a vision are they all all on the on the same page they're not yeah and very uh, quickly i like to share add and add to that that uh, chandra babu naidu's son has already uh, made demands that uh, the reservation for muslims as a form of uh, social security measure uh, needs to be brought in now uh, uh, we as you know political commentators analysts and even anybody walking on the street they would note that bjp's complete outlook is anti muslim anti christian anti minority 
now you have an alliance partner who says that they want muslim reservation now how would bjp uh, respond to that and if it does respond and give that to its alliance partner what will the core voters of bjp say because yeah. they the bjp has always worked on consolidating the entire game of fragmentation and of course i believe somewhere they are also very hateful people themselves but uh, they they've always batted to their core voters so what's what's your uh, and, and also about special status modi is completely opposed to special status for uh, you know territories and states because he always uh, believes in the centralization of powers and against federalism whereas now nitish kumar as well as chandra babu naidu both are asking for special yeah, status for their respective states states financial rights in, in gst there are the 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 thing will be a bumpy ride so this coalition even to pass I mean, the, 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 the mr modi may be sworn in as the prime minister and uh, he might uh, swear in a council of ministers mm -hmm. but then <clears throat> when the when the uh, test to prove his uh, numbers his majority in the floor test comes i i have my own doubts i'm not saying that you know he may not be able to clear it but i won't be surprised if he doesn't clear it so do you think i don't know i'm i'm expecting somewhere that uh, mr chandra babu naidu the kind of uh, you know uh, the way that modi went behind persecuting chandra babu naidu after coming to power in 2014 uh maybe mr naidu may take revenge for that <laughs> sometime very soon uh and it may take the form of uh, you know ensuring that modi fails the flow test what do you think you know we 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 can't jump to such kind of a conclusions but you see uh, as i said these are very experienced politicians uh they they would not like to come across uh to the people of india and especially to their own states uh, Uh, people of their own states that you know they were unreasonable kind of a thing you know um, th they will definitely put forward uh, uh, their demands about the state uh, and if they are not met they'll have a reason to go back and say look you know uh, we 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 were a we were a part of the alliance and we wanted to stick to the alliance but then how do i stick to the alliance when uh, you know our uh, basic demands are not being met so that, yes. that, that the fifth thing is possible or uh, there is another scenario dev uh, suppose if uh, mr modi chooses to say yes yes kar lenge we will do it and then passes the uh, flow test but then goes back on uh, the promises made then the backlash will be much even more severe it will be worse yes yes and so, and, I mean, and i yes. yeah bumpy ride for this uh, thing if at all uh it it happens that it crosses the flow test for sure and uh it's actually uh, as a person you know uh, since i've studied uh, public administration and you know know a bit about how the center and the states and how the federal structure works or is supposed to work <laughs> contrary to what has happened in the last decade um any coalition government uh in the center is actually healthy for democracy because it uh, it ensures that every perspective is uh, respected it's heard and the the needs of the people they are met so for someone who is so used to like uh, as you rightly pointed out modi in his entire political career from the beginning till now uh you know as cm of gujarat as well as the pm of india two terms he has not had to deal with a coalition government or running a coalition government so do you think because uh of course he is he is very good at theatrics and you know acting and you know symbolism and all of that but to change one's character of of taking unilateral decisions of uh you know running rough shot over people is that going to change i i hardly see that possibility dev um you know uh unless you know uh, uh, we 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 see uh, a completely uh, hidden aspect of uh, his personality suddenly emerging i i, <laughs> I, I see that very likely you see uh 
when I, I'm not uh, I'm not reading the mind of uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, but you know about mm -hmm. 20, 22 years of his public life. I mean, it, it's all there mm -hmm. for us. Uh, as I said, you know, he he ran uh, governments both in Gandhinagar as well as in uh, New Delhi in his own way, as 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 though it is it is his own, not even a party government. Uh, he doesn't like to be accountable to anybody. He doesn't like to, you know, uh, yes. get clearance from anybody. That is the kind of a thing. So to me, it looks, you know, he's always been a wolf, and a wolf in wolf's clothing, not a not a disguised wolf. Today, to expect uh, <laughs> Indra Modi to change and become a wolf in sheep's clothing and start behaving like a sheep, I, I, I think it's too much of an ask. <laughs> I, I concur with your view. Uh, it's uh, and you, as you rightly pointed out, uh, aside from their uh, now newly uh, included alliance partners being chalk and cheese with Modi, uh, the new sort of behavioral expectation from Modi is also going to be a chalk and cheese with who he really is. So I thank you so much, uh, Dr. Prabhakar, for joining us today and. Uh, Really, it is always a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, I, all the viewers who watched your previous uh, segment also with me have pointed out they are a fan of your uh, insightful, uh, you know, whatever you share, your insights and your research and what you come up with. And surely, and I think all the viewers would agree that this is one of two people in the whole of India who have who had predicted what's going to happen and that exactly has happened so uh hats off to you and every effort that you've made during this election season dr prabhakar uh, uh, the people of india do have a debt towards you thank you very much Dave. thanks a lot it's a pleasure always to talk to you and to be on your platform Bye bye. Thank you so much. Matashto Vishesha video Matu Hosa video YouTube channel subscribe Matu bell icon click